Hey everyone, this is Mr. U.S. History. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be making a prediction for the 2024 Senate elections, the 2024 House elections, as well as the 2024 presidential elections. So let's get started with the 2024 House Senate elections. So in this election, so far Democrats have 40 safe seats and Republicans have 49 safe seats. This includes the state of West Virginia in which Joe Manchin is retiring and Republicans have a very easy pickup there. The remaining of these seats, I would say, are seats where the Republicans or the Democrats have a less than 90% chance of winning in. The safe seats are seats which they have a greater than 90% chance of winning. So let's start with a few states that I consider to be likely Democrat. These are states that Democrats have a 70 to 90% chance of winning. This includes the state of Maryland, where the only thing that's making the state competitive is the fact that Governor Larry Hogan, he's the former governor of Maryland, he's a very popular Republican governor there. He managed to win by landslide margins in 2018 when he was the incumbent governor. However, this is still a very solid blue state at the federal level, and I just don't think they're going to send a Republican senator there, even though they may elect him as governor. And keep in mind, at the same time, that Donald Trump is likely going to lose the state to Joe Biden by 33 points come November on the presidential level. And I don't think that Larry Hogan will be able to outperform Donald Trump by 33 percentage points. So if this was a non-presidential year, Larry Hogan might have had a much better chance. But considering how this is a presidential year, Larry Hogan is kind of doomed in that state. So I accidentally characterized the state of Montana as solid red because... I'm just used to characterizing as that, but it's competitive for the Senate election. So let's get to the state of New Mexico next, where I think Democrats have a 70 to 90% chance of winning. New Mexico is kind of a weird state politically, despite having a huge Hispanic population, where in other states the Hispanic population has moved to the right. This hasn't really happened so much in New Mexico, which is likely because of the fact that gains by Republicans in New Mexico among Hispanics have been offset by Democrat gains among suburbanites in the Albuquerque in the Albuquerque area. So anyway, the thing that's making the state somewhat competitive is the fact that Nella Dominici, she is the heiress to the Dominici political family in New Mexico. Very prominent political family there. She's running for the Senate seat, but despite that, I still think that Democrats hold it uh, probably by like about seven points or so. All right, now we have these remaining Senate seats. Let's get into the state of Pennsylvania, where I think Democrats hold this most likely because Bob Casey is Bob Casey. He's uh, from a politically prominent family in Pennsylvania. He has very high name recognition. Also, considering the fact that his Republican opponent, Dave McCormick, now many Republicans will say if he ran in 2022, he likely would have defeated John Fetterman. I don't believe this to be so because McCormick, just like Dr. Oz, is largely out of state being from Connecticut, as well as the fact that Bob Casey just has so, uh, is just very politically prominent here. I think Democrats have a very good shot of keeping the state of Pennsylvania, even if Donald Trump wins it on the presidential level. All right, now we have these remaining few seats. I think in the state of Virginia, this is also likely blue. Because Tim Kaine is Tim Kaine. He's represented the seat in the Senate for quite a while. He's also prominent for being Hillary Clinton's vice presidential candidate. And even though Republicans actually have a fairly good candidate there in Hung Kao, I don't think he's enough to defeat Tim Kaine. All right, now we have these remaining seats. Let's look at some st seats that are likely for the Republican Party. These are states like Texas and Florida where in the case of Florida, this has been a state that has been trending rightwards off of a cliff, and I think Rick Scott wins fairly easily. Same thing for Ted Cruz in Texas. He almost had a scare in 2018. I don't think that repeats again in 2024. All right, now these remaining seats are going to be either lean or tilt seats, in the sense that they are going to go to one party by a 60% chance, by, by less than a 70% chance. A lean margin is somewhere from 60 to 70 percent, while a tilt margin is somewhere from 50 to 60 percent. So, let's start with the state of Wisconsin. I think Democrats hold this seat because Tammy Baldwin, she's been representing there for 12 years. She's tended to outperform uh, past Democrats in this state. And plus, the Republican opponent, Eric Hovde, 
He's kind of an out-of-state out um, millionaire from California, and that's kind of been the strategy that Republicans have been using for the Senate elections, which have they've been taking many millionaires and rich people who can fund their own campaigns, but they've been taking them from out-of-state, and they're not very prominent in these areas, which itself is pretty much a problem. While the candidates are definitely better than they were in 2022, I don't think they're good enough to defeat many of these well-established Democrat incumbents. And I think Tammy Baldwin outperforms Joe Biden in many of the, in a lot of the state. For example, I think she heavily outperforms him in the driftless area. All right, so now next up is the state of Michigan. Same thing here as Wisconsin. Unlike other states where Cal like California and New York, where down-ballot Republicans tend to do much better than Republicans at the top of the ticket for a presidential election, in the Rust Belt, it's kind of the opposite thing where down-ballot Republicans do worse than Donald Trump. And I think this is going to be the case in the state of Michigan, because even if Trump carries the state, I still think Republicans will narrowly lose it. Or, actually, on the other hand, in 2020, though, John James did end up outperforming Trump in the state of Michigan by about a point. So maybe Republicans have a better shot of winning the state than they do in a state like Wisconsin, for example. But I still think the Democrats hold the state of Michigan on the Senate level. I, I don't think really anything changes on this front, especially considering how Alyssa Slotkin is a candidate. And Slotkin has had a tendency to outperform, especially in her own congressional district, which is a fairly competitive district that she's been able to win by pretty decent margins lately. So I think Slotkin narrowly wins the district. Now, we have these four remaining congressional districts. And in the state of Arizona, I think Democrats also narrowly hold this because they're making the mis Republicans are making the mistake of nominating Kerry Lake, who, as we saw back in 2022, isn't really the best candidate. If Republicans had the candidates in Arizona that they have in other states like California and New York and New Jersey, this would be a fairly easy election for the GOP there, considering how it's also an open seat. But for whatever reason, Republicans tend to nominate pretty bad candidates in states like Arizona. So I think the state of Arizona narrowly goes to Ruben Gallego and the Democrats. All right, now we have these three remaining uh, Senate seats. Republicans just need to, need, win, need to win one of these seats, and they flip the upper chamber. And uh, we'll start with the state of Nevada. I think this one also narrowly goes to the Democrats by a lean margin because, again, Jackie Rosen, even though she's only a one-term senator, I still think she ends up winning. And I don't think, and I think even if Donald Trump does somehow, does manage to win the state, I don't necessarily think that Republicans are going to flip the Senate seat. They failed to do so in 2022, and I don't see any reason why they would be able to win it in 2024. I get that it's presidential year turnout, but Republicans did do fairly well already in 2022 in Nevada, and I don't think they can do any better this time, especially considering how Jackie Rosen is pretty prominent in Clark County, and this area has been tr trending, even though this area has been trending to the right. I think she does outperform Joe Biden in Clark County, and this alone will help her win the state, state even if Donald Trump flips the state on the presidential level. Okay, now we have these two remaining states, the states of Ohio and Montana. I think both of these states have a good shot of going to the Republican Party. And here's why, which is the fact that Donald Trump is likely going to win these states by roughly 10% or more. And I don't see Sherrod Brown or John Tester outperforming Joe Biden by 10 points across the state. Sure, they will do better for sure. I think John Tester more so than Sherrod Brown. But I, I don't think it'll be enough for the two of them to win, especially considering how this time they're actually facing well-funded Republican opponents as opposed to 2022 where, or 2018 where Republicans basically just gave up on these states. All right, now let's get to the House level. I've already filled out the likely red states for the House GOP because it would just take way too much time to do that. So let's get with the 34 competitive House seats. All right, starting with the state of Montana, Ryan Zinke somehow almost lost this district in 2022. I don't think this is the case in 2024 with Trump on the ballot. And... Also, Nebraska's second district, I think Republicans narrowly win this because in 2020, even though Trump lost the district by seven points, Don Bacon was still able to win the district narrowly. And I think that's going to be the case again in 2024. 
even if Trump loses the district, I think Don Bacon will hold on. Same thing with uh, Zach Nunn in Iowa. So, also Derek Van Orden in Wisconsin also likely holds on because there will be probably much greater turnout among Republicans in the Driftless area than there was in 2022. Also in the state of Michigan, I think John James holds on to his congressional district. However, I think Democrats also hold on to both of these congressional districts in Michigan, likely because of the fact that de Democrats have down-ballot tended to perform better in those two districts, especially in 2020 where we saw Alyssa Slotkin and Dan Kildee do much better than Trump, than uh, Biden in these districts. So I think that continues in 2024. All right, so now we see Ohio's uh, Marcy Captor's district. I think she holds, uh, or Mary Captor, I don't know which one it is, but Captor's district. I think she holds on to this district. She's represented this district since 1992, I believe. Even though Trump narrowly won the district, in, or I think he narrowly won it back in 2020, I don't think that Captor loses this district. Same thing with Amelia Sykes in this district. Joe Biden actually won this district back in 2020. I don't think she loses it. Now let's get to the state of Virginia. I think um, Democrats hold on to this congressional district, even though Abigail Spanberger is retiring. This is still a fairly blue congressional district. And as and on the other hand, though, I think Republicans hold this Chesapeake Bay district. I think Jen Kiggins manages to hold on. I think Trump could even flip this district in 2024. And that would definitely help Kiggins. Okay, now we have these districts in New York and Pennsylvania, as well as New Jersey that are competitive. This district, uh, I believe Brian Fitzpatrick's district, this is a likely red district. I didn't characterize that, but even though Joe Biden has managed, will probably win this district, Brian Fitzpatrick is Brian Fitzpatrick, and he tends to outperform the um, whoever the candidate is at the top of the ticket by vast amounts, whether it be Doug Mastriano, who lost the district by like 15 points in 2020, in 2022, or Joe Biden, who won the, or Donald Trump, who lost the district by like nine points in 2020, Brian Fitzpatrick would be able to win the district. All right, now we have these two districts in northern Pennsylvania. Again, these two Democrats outperformed Biden in 2020. I, don't, I think they'll probably do the same again in 2024. Okay, so we have these remaining districts in New York and New Jersey. I think um, Republicans um, narrowly win New Jersey's 3rd Congressional District. I think Tom Keene wins the district overall, and Republicans have been doing better in New Jersey lately, so I think that continues. And they also have been doing better in New York lately, and I think that'll show as they probably end up winning Mark Molinero's district. I think they hold that one. However, again, 2022, Demo Republicans had Lee Zeldin at the top of the ticket to benefit them. He lost New York by just about six points. This time they have Donald Trump at the top of the ticket. He'll lose New York by about 13 points. And I know there are some polls which say New York is in single digits. I don't buy it. I think uh, Democrats do fairly well here. I think Biden probably wins it by 15, actually. So again, they don't have the same top of the ticket boost as they did last time. So I think Brandon Williams loses. I think Pat Ryan holds on. I think um, Anthony uh, D'Esposito narrowly loses by a tilt margin. I think Mike Lawler, though, manages. Or actually, I think Mike Lawler loses narrowly to Mondaire Jones. There we go. So Democrats have 210. Republicans have 211. Okay, so now we, let's go to the West Coast. We have the state of Washington and Washington's 3rd Congressional District. Republicans could have won this district, but they nominated Joe Kent again. He was an underperformer in 2022. He'll underperform again in 2024. Democrats win this district. Now, we have Oregon's 7th district. I think Lori Chavez Deremer got really lucky in 2022, where she faced a really bad Democrat opponent. However, unlike Republicans in Washington, Democrats in Oregon have learned their lesson, and they're nominating a better candidate this time. Plus, Chavez Duremer doesn't have a good Republican candidate at the top of the ticket to help her, so she probably loses. Okay, so we just have the West, the, the, these Western states, and the South remaining. So let's go to California, where I think John Duarte very narrowly wins this time, because his district has been trending rightwards. Trump lost the district by 10 back in 2020, and then Republicans 
they won the this district in the governor race in 2022 by about nine points. That's a 19 point shift to the right. And I think John Duarte gets benefited immensely by this shift. I think Trump can pro will probably lose the district by about four points. But considering how Republicans in California tend to outperform Trump by about seven to ten points, I think Duarte will win the district. Okay, now we have California's, I believe this is the 22nd district, David Valadeo is the incumbent here. He wins the district. He's been a real, really good incumbent here when it comes towards winning the district. He barely lost in 2018, which was a blue wave year. He won it back in 2020, where Joe Biden lost at the, where Joe Biden won the district at the top of the ticket by 12 points. He outperformed Trump by 13 points across the district. I don't think that'll change again in 2024. I think um, David Valadeo wins. Now we have Mike Garcia. This is a likely red district. I forgot to characterize it, but Garcia has just been winning this district again and again by pretty considerable margins, despite the fact that this is a fairly blue district, and I don't think that changes much in 2024. Now we have these three districts in Southern California. I think Ken Calvert narrowly wins the district in 2024, but he will certainly lose it in 2026 if Trump is the incumbent. And as for these two uh, Orange County congressional districts, well, Republicans have been doing a lot better in Orange County, la County lately. So I think, um, I think I believe Michelle Steele wins her district. She's also a really good uh, candidate when it comes towards winning. And I think Scott Bow flips uh, this district in California. This is based in Orange County, which has been trending towards the right. And I think Republicans as a whole gain one seat in California. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six districts remaining. Republicans just need to win one, and they win the House. And that'll come in the state of Alaska, where unlike many who think that Democrats will win this district because of ranked choice voting, unlike last time, Republicans have formed a strategy here, and whoever loses the primary is going to drop out before the general election comes out. So the voting will only be between two candidates. And considering how Trump likely wins Alaska by about 13 points, I don't think Republicans lose this district. Okay, so now we have the state of Arizona. Uh, I think Juan Siscomini wins and David Schweiker, I think both of them win. They outperformed Kerry Lake and Blake Masters vastly in 2020, in 2022. So th they've had a tendency to outperform the top of the ticket. And that'll continue in 2024. And I think both of them hold on, although Schweiker much more narrowly than Siska maybe. Okay, so New Mexico's second congressional district, I believe, or is it the third? I don't really know, but all I know is Gabe Vasquez is going to hold on. This is a fairly blue district in New Mexico. Democrats really gerrymandered New Mexico, so I think they hold on there. Same thing with Colorado. They didn't gerrymander here, but... This part of Denver has been shifting towards the left, and I think that continues. So, now we have North Carolina and the congressional district here. I think Republicans win this district narrowly because of the fact that this area of North Carolina, northeastern North Carolina, has been trending towards the right lately. And I think Donald Trump does flip this district, and I think the Republican there, Lori Buckhout, will win this district in North Carolina. So there we go. That's my 2024 um, House election prediction. Republicans get 221 and Democrats get 214. As a whole, Republicans just lose one House seat relative to 2022. Okay, now we get, last but not least, the presidential election. Now, these are the states that are safe for Joe Biden, and these are the states that are safe for Donald Trump. Uh, so now let's get into the likely blue states. This includes the state of New Mexico, the state of Virginia, as well as the state of Maine at large. And uh, New Hampshire is likely blue. Not safe blue, but New Hampshire is likely blue. I think Joe Biden has a fairly good chance of winning the state. I know that there are polls by Republican internals that have Trump doing very well in these states. I don't think they hold up. I think Joe Biden wins these states. Now we have likely red states such as Texas and Florida, which Trump wins fairly easily this time around. Texas and Florida were close last time. I don't think that's the case this time, considering how Florida has been trending to the right, as well as the fact that the national environment as a whole is going to be more favorable to Republicans than 2020. So now we have the, uh, as well as the state of Ohio, this is also likely red, maybe even safe red, but I'll keep it as likely for now. 
Republicans are going to win Ohio. There's no question about it. So that keeps them at two. That puts them at 218, and Democrats at 215. So now these remaining states are going to be lean blue or lean red, except for Maine's first, uh, Maine's second congressional district, which Trump is probably going to win fairly easily. So we have the states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, and North Carolina. So I think um, Trump wins North Carolina. He flips Georgia, and he probably wins Arizona by a lean margin. These are all Sun Belt states that Joe Biden did fairly well in 2020, but I think Trump flips Arizona and Georgia, as well as the state of Wisconsin also by a lean R, uh, margin. Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia very narrowly went to Joe Biden in 2020, and that was when he had a pandemic to help him. There was also an economic recession, and he was also much more popular than Trump. This time, he's actually more unpopular than Trump. So I think all three states flip to Donald Trump, which puts him at 272, and lets him win the election. Now, Nebraska's second district, I think Joe Biden wins this district probably by about four points. This is a part of Omaha that has been trending to the left. And even though Trump is going to do probably a little bit better, I think the leftward trend in this district is too much to uh, let him win. Now, we have Nevada, Minnesota, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. I think the state of Minnesota narrowly goes to Biden. Um, this is a traditionally Democratic stronghold. It hasn't gone red since 1972. And even then, in 1984, even with Reagan winning in a landslide in every state, he lost Minnesota narrowly. But I think Democrats end up winning Minnesota in 2024 just because um, I don't think Joe Biden is going to lose a state that he won by seven points in 2020. Okay, now Nevada, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. I think Donald Trump wins all three of these states, although by a tilt margin. These are states that I think are going to be decided by less than 1%, and he has a very narrow shot of winning. But as of now, considering the post-debate fallout regarding Joe Biden, as well as the fact that Democrats are divided and the fact that Joe Biden's approval rating is currently in the gutter, I think that Donald Trump wins the election. So I think that there will be a narrow Republican trifecta with narrow majorities in the House and Senate, but a pretty commanding presidential uh, victory electoral college-wise. And I think Trump actually has a good shot of winning the popular vote this time, unlike 2020 and 2016. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like this video down below and subscribe to the channel.